Let's talk about the range of diverticular disease, ranging from diverticulosis to acute diverticulitis to a complication of diverticulitis, which is a diverticular abscess. What I have pulled up here is a non-contrast axial CT of the abdomen, and this is just diverticulosis. I'll make the distinction now that diverticulosis is the presence of these numerous diverticulae of the colon without inflammation. Once one of these becomes inflamed, that's when we're dealing with diverticulitis. In this case, we just have a sigmoid colon primarily that has a lot of little small diverticulae. They're not inflamed, and I'll talk about how you identify the inflammation later. Before that, I just want to show you what a diverticula looks like. So I'm going to stop on this slice here of the sigmoid colon, and I want you to just look at the margin of the colonic wall. And it's not smooth. There's all these little tiny outpouchings, and I'm kind of tracing the outpouchings with my mouse. So these little outpouchings form in areas of inherent weakness of the colonic wall. They're thought to occur at the place where the penetrating vessels of the colonic wall are kind of traversing. So that's where these things end up developing. Diverticulosis is a very common cause of painless gastrointestinal bleeding. So if you have a patient that comes in with painless GI bleeding, I think diverticulosis should be towards the top of your differential diagnosis. In this case, this patient has pretty extensive diverticulosis. So again, as I'm outlining the colonic wall, there's lots of these tiny outpouchings, and these are all diverticulae. So this is diverticulosis without diverticulitis. Very, very common. You see it all the time. It's just an incidental finding on a patient being scanned for another reason. Before we go into a case of diverticulitis, I want to contrast what I just showed you, which is diverticulosis, to a normal looking colon that doesn't have all these little outpouchings. So look at the colonic wall here. So this is the sigmoid colon. Notice just the smooth margin of the colonic wall. So this is a case of a normal sigmoid colon and one without diverticulosis. Okay, so I've got another CT of the abdomen pulled up, and I'm going to show you a case of acute diverticulitis. So I'm scrolling in fairly, and one thing I want you to do, and I've said this in other videos because it's just kind of a rule of radiology, and particularly CT, follow the fat. And when I say follow the fat, what I'm really saying is the fat surrounding a certain organ, if it looks unhealthy, and I'll talk about what that is later, you should suspect that something is wrong with the organ. So if the gallbladder is inflamed, for example, the fat surrounding the gallbladder is going to look irritated. There's going to be fat stranding, there's going to be inflammation of the fat around the gallbladder. Same goes for the appendix. If the appendix is unhappy, if you have appendicitis, the fat surrounding the appendix is going to look inflamed. The same rule applies for diverticulitis and really any other inflammatory process in the body. Look at the fat around. The fat will look unhappy if there's something wrong with whatever organ or thing you're looking at. So in this case, we have a patient with diverticulosis. Here are outpouchings, little diverticulae here. We're at the level of the sigmoid colon again. So we know to start that the patient has at least diverticulosis, but I want you to pay attention to the mesenteric fat, okay? So I'm going superiorly and I'm gonna come down inferiorly and I want your eyes to focus in this area kind of centrally within the abdomen. So look at the fat around this part of the colon and I'm gonna go a little bit more inferiorly. Do you notice how it's just not clean, meaning there's all these little strands around this part of the colon? That is mesenteric fat stranding, and that is evidence of inflammation within this part of the abdomen. And the reason that we have inflammation here is because we have acute diverticulitis. So in a colon that has a lot of diverticulae, you have a patient coming in with lower abdominal pain, and you see this fat stranding in the abdomen. That's a slam dunk acute diverticulitis. There is some teaching that if you see this look, you also need to think about an underlying colonic malignancy, and you should suggest at some point a colonoscopy if the patient hasn't had one already. So just keep that in mind. Most of the time, this is just acute, uncomplicated diverticulitis, and there's not a cancer underlying there. But the teaching, at least that I've been taught, is to think about the presence of a cancer also causing this look. So eventually, the patient should at least be considered for a colonoscopy if they haven't had one anytime recently. So this is acute, uncomplicated diverticulitis. Again, think about the fat. Always look at the fat when you're reviewing a study. The fat kind of tells the story. The fat paints a picture of what's going on with the adjacent organ. In this case, the fat is very unhappy here, centrally in the abdomen. There's a lot of fat stranding, there's inflammation, and that is because there is acute diverticulitis. So I wanna show you one more case. I'm gonna pull that up now. Of acute diverticulitis that's kind of gone to the next level. And in this case, there's actually contrast in the colon. Here's the rectum here. It's very bright because contrast has been administered into the rectum. So I'm scrolling superiorly, and I want you to pay attention to this area here. So like I talked about in the last 
uncomplicated diverticulitis case, the fat around here is not happy. You see all this inflammation here, this fat stranding, maybe a little bit of fluid too. This is evidence that there is something going on with this part of the colon, which is right next to this fat. So not only is it inflamed, so we're on the spectrum of diverticulitis, but there is something one step further, and there is a fluid collection here. See this low density, hypodense area here, right contiguous with this part of the colon. There's inflammation around it. This is a diverticular abscess. So if you have diverticulitis, it continues, maybe it's improperly treated, maybe it's not diagnosed, or there's a delay in diagnosis, you can eventually develop a diverticular abscess. That's something that may need to be drained depending on the size. Beyond diverticular abscess, one other thing that I at least want to tell you about, I don't have a case of it, is colovesical fistula. A colovesical fistula is a communication between the colon and the bladder, and that is obviously very problematic. In general, fistulae cause all sorts of problems in the abdomen. So if you're going through a patient and you look at the bladder and there's air in the bladder, think about a colovesical fistula and look really closely to see if you see any colon that is traversing anywhere near the bladder wall, especially in a patient with prior diverticulitis, think about a colovesical fistula. You should not see air in the bladder the exception is if a patient has a Foley catheter or has recently been catheterized, then air in the bladder can be normal. We'd call it iatrogenic. But otherwise, if they haven't had any sort of catheter, you see air in the bladder, and you know the patient has diverticulitis or has had it in the past, think about a colovesical fistula. So there you have it. There are my cases of diverticulosis, acute diverticulitis, and a diverticular abscess. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. See you next time.